I want to be a jerk. Just kidding, I don't. You know what? Oddly enough, Italian music was not played. That's something I discovered off YouTube. A lot of darker things. A little emo moment. I was like, I want you to be under this red light. I want you to lick this knife and I'm only going to photograph your tongue. Everyone gets hiccups. It's how else are you going to learn except I had to do those hiccups on national television. <laughs> right? Yeah. So that was fun. <laughs> There's a runway right now in my interview. <laughs> Guys, today I'm going to talk about glitter. <laughs> glitter brings light to your life. However, in moderation, it's also really bad for the environment. I find, I find romantic love is the one that puts cracks, can put cracks in a, in a lot of things. Hi, this is Lauren Engel of Sidewalk Talk today. I'm here with Beto Lamy. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so you were born in Montreal. Born in Montreal. Were your parents born there as well or were they born in Italy? Born in Montreal. Um, well, some of the, the siblings were born in Italy. We've got a lot of siblings, We've got a lot of aunts and uncles. It's a big family. So was it your grandparents who moved to Canada? or? Yeah, exactly. Um, so they came They came a little bit later on. So uh, growing up, Italian was actually my first language. Oh, wow. But yeah, but because of you know school and learning French in school and such, um, it wasn't spoken at home as often, so I still understand it totally fluently. Most of the music I listen to is in Italian, but um, sometimes I can't find the words, so I'm really shy to speak in Italian. You know? <laughs> but I, I could do just fine if I went if I went there. So. Mm -hmm. And what careers are your parents, or when you were growing up? I was growing up. It was like just like regular, regular jobs. Nothing, nothing crazy. Like what? You know, um, like working in like. A, what do you call that? Um, you manage like a building. Oh, okay. You know, like th things like that. We had some like construction, which is ironic when you say I'm Italian. It's just construction, but <laughs> <laughs> um, stuff like that. Really, really hard workers. Really, mm -hmm. really hard workers. And I came, you know, growing up, um, my mom worked really hard, and and I had a really beautiful family. And where do you think you got your creative side from? My creative side? Yeah. Uh, my mom has a really funky personality. She's very dry. But I think <laughs> the creative, sometimes I think it's from my grandmother. She's very colorful. And I don't know because my mom and my brother, like sometimes I'm like I'm like the alien in the family because they're they're so good with, with, with like mathematics and like mm. logistics and I'm just like, this couch can't be here. It ruins the room. It's very different. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think... That's just something that it just happens. It doesn't necessarily come from from someone. If anything, maybe my dad. Oh, okay. Um, heard he, he used to draw a ton. Mm -hmm. And when you were really young, like two, you were playing the Adams Family. Was it the theme song? Yeah, that was at my grandmother's house. My grandmother had a piano, and I used to go there. That was a bus, in case you didn't hear it. <laughs> uh, I used to go there and and ba da da da. I couldn't snap, so it was probably just like a. Mm -hmm. I remember that. And um, that was the thing. Yeah. And then what made you want to pick up so many instruments? The challenge of it, like when I touched the piano, everything made sense. Mm -hmm. All the keys are there. I play by ear. I still can't read a note, which is very frustrating. Um, but being able to like always pick up an instrument and also the thrill of seeing someone else be like, but you just touched this, how can you play it? That kind of was really satisfying. But it's kind of like all these friends that you know you'll get along with mm. you just haven't met yet. That's how I feel about Yeah. This. Sounds really dorky. <laughs> and how did you have access to so many instruments? Were you renting it? No, I mean, well, when I grew up, so like I, my grandmother had a piano. I didn't have a piano at home. Um, but there'll be like little things like like fake guitars or like fake xylophones at school. They didn't even have a music program at school. But, like the other day I was in the shower and like, you know, when you have a, a metal grate, like to hold soap. Yeah. I literally plucked the strings and found tones in them and literally made a song out of like a soap holder. Oh my gosh. And I was like, dun, dun, dun. And I was like, yeah, you're writing the song. You wrote an awesome song. <laughs> um, so to answer your question, like, I don't even know what the question was. ADD is real. <laughs> and what kind of music was played in the house? A lot of Elton John, a lot of Queen, a lot of Cat Stevens. The dance stuff wasn't really played. My brother liked Benny Benassi, but you know, it's like the late 90s, and that was yeah. some of my favorite for sure. Mm. How about for Italian music? You know what? Oddly enough, Italian music was not played. That's something I discovered off YouTube. I oh. remember a, a couple years back, I got so stuck with YouTube. Like, it would be 7 o'clock at night, and then I would blink, and it was 2 o'clock in the morning. I would like go through an entire artist's complete catalog, just like 
feeling so like I couldn't get enough. I almost felt like uh, it was like a new addiction. It was like smoking but videos. Mm -hmm. I went through like packs and packs a day. But how did it click to you that you wanted to do music for your life? For my life? Yeah. I mean it didn't. Everyone always told me like you can't support yourself when you're an artist and I, under I understand that that could could be a possibility. Um, everything I've done, I've been working since I was 15 and I've always found a way to make a living even if it was working for myself or finding a business within something. Um, so hearing, being told that was really discouraging and for a second I almost believed it, like when music school said no. But then when I, I was like, I can't do this anymore, like it was really bothering me, I ended up moving to New York. Mm -hmm. Seeing people that were making music, had to make a face right now because those guys were really funny. Um, <laughs> being people in New York that were making music was like, okay, so I don't have to go to school for this, I can do this. And it is possible and I'm going to give it my best shot. And I gave it my best shot and that's when I put my first song up. Mm -hmm. How do you describe your personality back then when you were growing up? Growing up? Yeah. Uh, shy. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. I feel like you're so outgoing now. Well now we're like just us, but I'm like so <laughs> It's easy one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm, yeah. Um, so you did, did you like school or? I love school because I love being graded. Really? I love being graded. Oh my gosh, you're the first just in ever ever really? interview that said that. Like yeah. if, I get, if they gave me like an 80, I'd be like, but why? Under like what grounds? Why does this get an 80? What can we improve and how can I make this the best paper ever? Oh, like, wow. I was very competitive like that, but only with myself. Like my mom was like, all right, you passed. Cool, and I was like, no. Why is it not wonderful? Yeah. <laughs> um, that's how I felt about Where it. Where do you think you got the drive from? I watched a lot of Oprah as a child. No, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know, I just, I have, um, I like things a certain way. Mm -hmm. I, very particular, fastidious and precise, as my yeah. Gregory says. Um, <laughs> Did you do well know. in all subjects too, or no, mostly just? No, oh my god, I failed, I failed music, oh. like every single year, and it was just like a fluke, whatever. But they would notice that I was not reading the notes and so I failed every single time and then math too math I'll fail math unless I'm getting paid like I don't care about math mm -hmm. I don't need to know like why Jimmy round around the block and what X was like I don't need to know so were you good at like English and stuff then I love writing so much that was like a nice outlet mm -hmm. I like I love the idea of like potentially maybe writing comedy one day or even maybe even writing um, just updates. I like yeah. grilling people. Like a dream job would be like going into a space and like critiquing it. Because that's I do that with myself personally, and I can do it with like environments too. That would be my favorite. Because I just want to be a jerk. Yeah. <laughs> I want to be a jerk. Just kidding. I don't. <laughs> oh I don't even know if you can hear me. We're on a busy street. We have to look both ways. So we don't yeah. Hit. Um. What kind of career did you have like after high school? I went to college. And oh, okay. I studied photography and film. Oh. And I loved it. What made you want to so study photography and film? It, it, it seemed like a better option than doing socials. I knew I'd get good grades. So mm -hmm. I was like, well, this will be easy. It's not going to take up so much work. It's creative. Yeah. And then uh, what else? Were your par parents or family show of you doing photography? Because that's also like, They're like oh, a creative yeah, you know. thing. Did you think you were going to be a full-time photographer or? I mean, I what, you want to get a tattoo? Oh my god. <laughs> this place. Um, I didn't, I don't know. I just wanted to do what made me excited and I was excelling in, it's such a school world word. Yeah, I was, I was excelling in photography. <laughs> um, we have someone literally getting arrested right oh now. Oh my god. What kind of uh, photography were you doing? Like, was it fashion, photography, or It was travel? Mm, kind of like weird abstract. Like I'd photograph water and putting guys into water and going really, really close. And everyone else was like kind of photographing trees and people walking, which is fine. Yeah. But I've seen it before. I, I want to like, I want to photograph things that make people go, I don't understand what is it, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of darker things. A little emo moment. I was like, I want you to be under this red light and I want you to lick this knife and I'm only going to photograph your tongue. Like, and then I'd flip it upside down and I was like, what is this? <laughs> but it was cool and it was, it passed the time and it really helped with the guilt of not being able to go to music school because after, the, for a whole year I didn't touch a piano, I was so bummed out. I worked in a couple different fields. Uh, You're also more, doing modeling? Yeah, that was, I mean, hmm. It was funny, it, was, it didn't last that long. It was cool, but I did it because I knew 
how to work behind the camera. So I was like, let's see what it's oh. like in front of the camera. And then from there, I became like like a grandmother agent where I started like building people's books. Like I just basically just wanted to be a control freak and like do all the things mm -hmm. at the same time. Here's barbed wire. <laughs> No, I just want to do all the things. So that that allowed me to travel. That allowed me to like, kind of sort my thoughts and learn a little bit more about myself, which was very, mm -hmm. which was the most important thing. And finally, once I was not sitting well with myself, I was like, that's it. I'm moving mm -hmm. to New York. Didn't know anybody. Nightmare. Yeah. I moved like five times in the first five months, trying to find people to write with. Um, I finally met someone who inspired me a little bit to just give mm -hmm. it an extra shot. So I stayed a month longer and then I wrote Bambala. Yeah. Wait, so how did you get to New York? Yeah, I applied. I applied for a, a little visa. I was waiting for it to be accepted and I was kind of like airbnb being, Just a nightmare. Mm -hmm. Or just renting rooms. It was months to months. What kind of jobs were you working? I did people's um, socials for a while, actually. Oh, so you're I a social was... media consultant? Actually, yes. <laughs> things. I was a grandmother agent for um, some models that were doing really, really well. And, and I was doing... Was, was it part of an agency in New York that you were working with or uh, just yourself? No, everywhere. So I was placing them with like different... Oh, okay. But um, the company that you were working for, or you were just working for yourself. Yeah. Like you found these, you scouted these girls. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. That's so cool. Um, girls and guys and have lovely relationships with them. It was kind of just like, even if we were talking for like a year or two, only when they were ready, I'd, place them. Um, oh, old Bree, this is so cool. Such an entrepreneur. God. Quite young. Quite young. I mean, it's like, it's like five, six years ago. Oh my gosh. And, and then for the socials, it was kind of like, that was, that, that was a result of New York because I had no idea how expensive New York was going to be. And I meet some people and I see their socials. And at one point I was like, yo, this is not good. I'd love to help you. And they're like, you do this? I was like, yeah. <laughs> That's so smart because you can shoot also, so you can do all the content for them. Yeah. And then you're good at writing, you could do the descriptions. Yeah. <laughs> so that was really cool. Mm -hmm. And this is all while writing Bambala. And this is the Bulldog EP. Mm -hmm. So you met Tucker like randomly? You didn't even know who he was? I had no idea. Well, he didn't even have any music out yet. Oh, this is like he before was, they this were. This way before, yeah. This is before they put their, their first EP and he had their songs out, so it's like. Well, little babies. <laughs> so I wrote the song with them, gave them like the dance moves for the song. I, I'm obsessed with Dusty Springfield mm -hmm. and like Dusty Springfield used to do, you know Dusty Springfield, right? She's like from the 60s, she's mm -hmm. like, iconic. She used to do a lot of like, a lot of dancers in the 60s would do this. Yeah. I was like, guys, what if we pretend we're like a trio and we just do this and that's how um, kind of choreography began uh, being integrated. Mm -hmm in that set which is really cool <laughs> and I love I love their music mm -hmm. so did well. you already have that song in mind or like your style in mind before meeting them or well, when I, I feel like them, such, you have a, such a distinct style from the onset well when I met them it's funny when I met them it was like again like maybe what five four four years ago um I really wanted to make like 90s pop 90s dance mm -hmm. pop I couldn't meet anybody to make and he's dancing, so he had all these ideas with no execution. And Tucker loves 90, so it was so cool to like see them go from their tribal to like their more of a 90s influence on the Tucker side. There, um, I was still really struggling to find someone to do that. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go the Bambola route of like the orchestral Italian, which is always gonna be an influence. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'll, you know the 90s a little bit later on but I just want to move down and start releasing so that's what I did. Well, how did you push that song initially? Uh, I didn't want to release it in the States because it's French, English and Italian. We had signed it to France and... Oh so did you already know people in the music industry? No. I had Bambula for many months before I gave it to anyone. Mm. I wanted to... plan in my head was is that it needed to be done over there otherwise it would probably die here and luckily I found someone who was on board with that and knew someone and I was like all right let's try this out yeah how so did you meet them I met them from a friend I was asking around like crazy I didn't know what the hell I was doing I still don't know what I'm doing half the time um, 
I guess it's just like a gut thing. I hope, mm -hmm. I hope, I hope it works. What made you realize that you wanted to wait for someone before putting I feel like a lot of artists, if it's like their first song, they just throw it on SoundCloud, so on YouTube, and just after then wait for people to... It's just so saturated. It's like... It's like, I feel like that's... That could be wonderful for certain types of music, but this is this is way more of like a cinematic mm -hmm. um, vibe, and there's... Uh, I don't know what it was. I, I didn't want to treat it like that. Yeah. And I understand some maybe some genres you you can do that. Um, I like to like set the stage a little bit more. Yeah. You know, so waited really see what the video. Mhm. Mm a little more old school like that, I guess. Yeah. And what did they do to push your song? We just we we showed some radios and it's very it's such a pop. It's such like a pop slash radio song, like just a drop. Yeah. Um, it's so good. Thank you. <laughs> it took me so long to figure out. Like I was uncomfortable with it because I thought I sang too loudly in it. Mm. Ridiculous. Still makes me awkward. Like, <laughs> Italy and in Italy, just like wildfire, because the song I added a little sprinkle um, to one of my favorite singers. Like remember those YouTube days? Yeah. Like, two in the morning. One of the singers is this, this woman, Patty Pravo, and she is like the Cher slash David Bowie of Italy. Iconic. And she had a song called called La Bambola. So I add a little, a little sprinkle, like half a line uh, in the song, just this little homage. So I think having a song also called Bambola was almost maybe a bit familiar to them. Mm. But in itself, I think the song stood out because the production and the drop is quite unique and having three yeah. languages no one's really done. So maybe that's why. Mm. I don't know. It would sound like self-masturbatory if I said how and why, because I don't know how and why. <laughs> was it surprising know. to you that your first song went to radio? I feel like it's unheard of. It, it, I, it's surprising that it did that well, mm. but I feel like my goal would be to make like cinematic and yeah. radio music, not like like some ambient, like, I love pop and dance smashers. My goal is to like make pop and dance smashers. Um, so I, if, if I don't see a movie in my head or see like a potential, like, oh my god, this would be so cool on this radio, I don't usually continue the song. Just me, maybe. <laughs> That's the way it is. <laughs> Passing the tattoo shop again. We should just get a tattoo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bambo. Bambo and then la. <laughs> oh yeah, we just continue with. So how did you meet our manager? My current manager? Yeah. Through my old manager, ironically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you never performed before and then you went straight to live TV. That's yeah. shocking. Oh my gosh. So the song comes out, does well. I'm in my friend's apartment in Brooklyn and they're like they want you on this TV show, which is like Jimmy, like the Jimmy Fallon. Yeah. And it's called Kid Tempo Kefa. In six days, can you do it? And I'm like, I've never performed. I've never performed it ever. And it's like, okay, I need to get a guitarist. And I'm trying to come up with like a show in my head in like three minutes. We're on this call. So I found a guitarist, and I came up. Like I met him like two days later. We rehearsed for two days, which is wild. His name's Simon. Oh I love him. He's so cool. And I turned him into a doll. So you can see that performance online. Yeah. Tempo like, Kefa is the name of the show. I turn him into a doll and every time I hit him, he comes to life and then mm -hmm. he plays the song. Yeah, yeah. Because Bambola in Italian means doll. And we did that. So like this first time I had in-ears in front of like six million people. I've never even had in-ears before. I'm hearing myself sing. I'm getting super uncomfortable hearing my own voice. Like, better shut up. I don't want to hear you. Mm -hmm. Ridiculous. So that was cool. I was just really nervous at one point. I remember like I choked on air. And I was like, like nothing was coming out. Oh my gosh. Because like, the thing with this project is like, kind of teething in, in public. Yeah. So like, I, I've never done it before. I'm bound to fuck up because everyone, everyone gets hiccups. It's how else are you going to learn? Except I had to do those hiccups on national television. <laughs> right? Yeah. So that was fun. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm excited. I think that's the coolest way to learn. Yeah. We should turn the camera around because that look is <laughs> fun. Are you getting me? <laughs> Bye, y'all. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> more on your website you were doing in New York? Well, when I was in New York, I had I was floating around and I was like writing about my experiences and my adventures. They're called like the Beta Updates, Adventures of Beta. <laughs> Hashtag. Um, so, Adventures of Beta, I would like walk around the city and, and I would just write and document things I saw, how they made me feel, how I would relate them to life, and the lessons I would learn at the end of those days or at the end of those weeks. Um, I talked to a lot of strangers, or sometimes I find like strangers would come up and talk to me. Some people would tell me really personal things. I don't know what oh, it wow. is. They would just tell me these wonderful things, and I see them as like little gifts or lessons or signs. I don't know. 
it sounds corny, but it's not. I, mm -hmm. I had like really beautiful experiences there, and I love, I loved writing about them. I didn't do it as much. I think I got in my own head a little. Really? A little bit. Did people start finding you from it, or like, or was it just kind of just you? No, no, no. People aren't knew it was me, but it was like a, it, I started like becoming less and less personal because we got uh, like Instagram started becoming. Oh yeah. Instagram started becoming like more fashion or photo based, less about captions. I don't know, I didn't even want to really talk about it. It's kind of like empty. Some of my best friends, we've met like four times in person and they're like the Dominican Republic. Some of them like are in Spain, like, you know? Mm -hmm. so, well, not Spain, but like London or whatever. Yeah. Um, so I think that was my favorite thing about these blogs and also with the music is like having a stranger send you a video from Iran of them singing your song when they're fucking depressed because like their government is in shambles right now but like you put a smile on this little girl's face because you have a song about female empowerment mm -hmm. with glitter yeah <laughs> oh that's so sweet it's so yeah. awesome yeah I love that what do you think you learn most about talking to these strangers on the street that we are all so much more alike than people yeah. even acknowledge yeah. Yeah. There's so like, no one talks about it and we all have anxieties and these, the same worries. Granted, some countries, and depending where you are, much greater, greater calls, much yeah. different situations. But at the end of the day, we all have similar feelings and we're all very similar. Like, just, the only difference is really a language, which at the end of the day can very much be solved. What's the inspiration for your upcoming music? Joy. Really? <laughs> You're over your bad breakup? I'm music. so over it. Oh, I don't even know if it was a breakup, it was just like a toxic leech mm -hmm. that I had to get my my bearings and I've been over that for so long but like then the song had like another year and a half of like life and I was like great I'm gonna have to like talk about this more but the new songs are just like super feeling myself with people around me hyping up the people around me being way more in my element these songs are there's like two sides of me it's like super super dance happy and then there's like that orchestral classic dramatic Side, right so mm -hmm. the next couple of songs I think are going to showcase more of the happier better finally yeah <laughs> um, which is cool mm -hmm. how about and the specific themes for it the specific themes I'd say way more in the realm of my favorite pocket of music in the late 90s and early 2000s mm -hmm. I've been wanting to have songs like this out for like the past five years I didn't know how to do it. Yeah. And I didn't find, I also couldn't, didn't have access to people that even wanted to create these things. Mm -hmm. So it's nice that some people are more open to it now and I didn't know how to do it on my own at the time. So if this is cool, it's finally going to come out and I mm -hmm. can't wait. How about the lyrics? The lyrics? Yeah. I'd say they're playful. Any specific stories? Um, I think it's about letting yourself be playful. Because mm -hmm. that's what this, what I think the song is, is about. Um, and stepping out there and I'm, I love to actually hear what other people think of it. That brings me the most joy. So you guys let me know. <laughs> yeah. At me. <laughs> and do you have any specific inspirations for your music videos like outside of other artists? Honestly, every video I do, I write in my head while the song is being made. Mm -hmm. um, so literally like I always have my laptop out and I, I'm picturing a song. I'm like, all right, we have to keep doing the song. And I'll write out the treatment then and there. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's always done then and there. Yeah. And then sometimes, depending on like this director, maybe they can add some things to the original treatment, but there's always those original elements that are that are in there. And then I, after we film them, I edit them. Mm -hmm. So that's like my favorite. That's like my all-time favorite is actually editing the videos. Yeah. Like, I, I wrote, I co-directed co and I wrote Bambala and edited the video. And then we did the same for Give It. Mm -hmm. Give It was different because we, were, we did so much um, CGI. Oh. We were working with this girl named Sam Cannon who's like so insanely talented with all mm -hmm. that. But like working together and learning about other people's processes are just that's a whole other world, like green screen. But this next one was it's the first time I've incorporated other people in a video and seeing their excitement and like hearing them and how inspired they were at the end of the day gave me so much fuel. I was like, Oh my gosh, this is the reason why I do this. This is so cool. Yeah. And I hope I could do more. <laughs> how about inspiration for your style? <laughs> There's a runway right now in my interview. <laughs> no, I, again, like late 90s or 2000s. I don't know, like if Missy Elliott had a baby with maybe Gwen Stefani, uh, maybe, yeah. right? <laughs> I mean, right now, this is definitely mm -hmm. sporting this, but um, I don't 
don't know, like a combination of like sporty spice and ginger. You know, <laughs> yeah. I like pants, and they're gonna catch me in like a short dress, but like I need the glitter. You know? Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, you're so obsessed with glitter. Where did I that come glitter. from? I love all things shiny. <laughs> uh, I, I wanted to design shoes when I was a kid. Oh, that's cool. And just like design clothing and everything that was like, I love Liberace because he's so bedazzled. Um, just like finding a sparkle in people and also finding a sparkle in articles of clothing is my favorite. Just wherever the sparkle is, find the light because that's mm -hmm. where my favorite yeah. things lie. Um, but the Bumble video, like pouring glitter all over myself, it yeah. just, I was like, oh, I have glitter on me. It's like, yeah, get it all over you. Good, like enjoy it. <laughs> so maybe that helps, but mm -hmm. I just, I love the sparkles. <laughs> and then do you also do a TED talk? TED talk, with Sophie and Tuck. Yeah. Yeah, I've never done like a my own personal like I'm gonna yeah. talk about life. That's Definitely difficult. It's kind of yet. like public speaking. Yeah. Or did you did you like it? Was it easy I mean, to do I for you? I love watching TED talks. Yeah. I don't know what I would speak about if it, like someone gave me a someone gave me a podium and a stage to be like, all right, better you're gonna talk about this. Like, what would I? What would you see me talking about? Glitter. <laughs> glitter. <laughs> Guys, today I'm gonna talk about glitter. <laughs> glitter brings light to your life. However, in moderation, it's also really bad the environment. How would you say you've grown as a person compared to when you were younger? Mm, the filter seems to have disappeared. Like there used to be a filter yeah. in my mouth that would like, you know, block these and now it's just... Oh. Um, also, I feel like I, 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 I feel a bit less guilty for asking for what I want when before. I try to like tiptoe, like, is that, is that okay? Mm -hmm. I still find myself doing it, but I'm like, why? Yeah. What am I losing? I love that. What, what do you think was a turning point for, I guess you just became more confident, right? I don't know if it's confident. I think it's like, you know when your gut tells you something, you're like, this isn't going to work, and then it doesn't work, and you're so mad that you oh, have like golden yeah. nuggets, and, and people are dropping it. Yeah. I don't want to see any more things that I put love into being dropped on the floor. So I'll do, it's kind of like your little babies. You do anything you can to protect yourself. And that's part of what makes me now... Like, well, if I can ask for it, why am I not asking for it? Yeah. You know, sometimes I go, when I go back home, so my friends are like, better like, do you need to send this plate back? I'm like, yes, because, like, I ordered this, and I'm spending for this, and I'm spending my time here, and my money here. Mm -hmm. Why not ask for exactly what you want? Like, if someone makes an error, just, like, you don't just, like, be like, oh, all right. Be like, all right, thank you, but let's fix it. Yeah. You know? What would you say have been your biggest challenges so far in your life? Hmm. Not dwelling about people not fixing it. Yeah, right? You just like. Sometimes I'm just like, it's like common sense, or like I can't with people's egos. I think the biggest thing, especially working, starting now to meet more people in music, there's so many mm -hmm. egos, and it's like a lot yeah. of. A lot of people are just really large, older children um, that make a lot of decisions. And luckily, I'm in a position now where I'm working with like wonderful, beautiful people, but I, I'm seeing a lot of like craziness. Dealing with like politics, not just like I'm gonna release yeah. a song on SoundCloud. It's like, what is, what, how, what is the plan? I like plans, I like planning. I'm a planning person. Mm -hmm. What about you? Yeah, I'm super. I feel like we're actually really similar. Yeah, I'm like, I'm meticulous. It's a, and you put a, love, a lot of love into it and you expect love in return, mm -hmm. reciprocation. Um, the challenges, I don't know what the challenges have been trying to like not do anything on the weekends. Yeah, that's a challenge. I hate it because I have like, the office constant stops working. on Friday and Monday and I'm like, well, what about, we have these two extra days, like why can't we just make ep epic things? Yeah. Why does no one want to work right now? It's not work, it's like fun. What does love mean to you? So many things I'm doing. Hmm. I guess that I'm trying to find the word for like no matter what. Um, Love means just like accepting someone entirely. Their faults, even if they piss you off, they're always gonna have a, a spot for them and you're always gonna wanna take care of them and have their best interest, no matter, even if they hate you and if they're mad at you, you're always going to have their best interest. Mm -hmm. um, there's so many different types, types of love, but at the end of the day, it's about enjoying all of that person and, and, and their place in your life and how they make your life better. It's kind of mm -hmm. selfish in a way, if I think of it that way, but it's like making each other's lives amplified and so much better. Yeah. That's a beautiful thing. And it, like, it doesn't have to be romantic. It could literally be... There's like... I love this one man who was at this... Always at the same metro every day in New York, in Manhattan. 
um, he's homeless. And I was like, oh my god, like, I love this guy. He is. We had like two hour long conversations. Oh, wow. so he was like, like a little angel. It's a weird example. I don't know why that even just came up and just popped in my head. I don't know about romantic love. That's one thing I'm just like. It's. Just, it's that, I find I find romantic love is the one that puts cracks, can put cracks, in a in a lot of things. Mm -hmm. It's just it's, it could be so strong. Um, I think like my favorite kind of love is like love for an animal mm -hmm. because that is actually like the purest form of love like you yeah. want to like take care of this thing make sure it's fed make sure it's warm make sure it's like it, there's never anything bad obviously there's no communication mm -hmm. but, like animals are a hundred percent pure love and I'm obsessed mm -hmm. we'll just do one more round and I think that's good I feel like okay. I probably sound like a ballet girl saying that <laughs> I don't even have enough words it's like just so much love for animals Last question, what do you want to be remembered for? How I made people feel when they were a part of being a part of this project. Mmm, I love that. This is perfect, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Bye. Also, high five, we didn't get hit by a car. I know, I was <laughs> close.